the phone guy, animatronics, survive till 6 a.m. or die. Five Nights at Freddy's has become a cultural phenomenon. It's everywhere, and every time you go to GameStop and you see a Freddy Fazbear toy, you know what I'm talking about. Five Nights at Freddy's is everybody's game. Hands down, the original was a timeless classic, and it was a very uh, easy game. Survive until, until 6 a.m., six nights, maybe seven nights if you want to count the 2020 mode. And it was legendary. The legendary parts of these animatronics hands down created the word. Five Nights at Freddy's. It has been it's been parodied. It has been, well, pretty much used in multiple other games, and it's become probably one of my personal favorites. Five Nights at Freddy's has become one of those types of like games that people don't know what it's for. But it's mostly the same thing. But it's more building up to the suspense because you are vulnerable. The only thing you have is a limited amount of power for your camera and the doors and lights that you have to use to survive yourself to 6 a.m. each night. And everything gets harder and harder as you keep going. And that's what kind of like what I loved about the original is that it got harder every time. And that's what made it interesting for me and interesting for all of you as well who have survived until 6 a.m. I've only survived, what, twice a couple of times? It's a very scary fact and it's very difficult. There are a lot of creepy scenes here, but S. Mike, um, if you know him originally, has done more about it, if you know him from my, from, from YouTube back then. So, quite clearly, Five Nights at Freddy's had some great ones. Bonnie being a very creepy one, creepy bunny, if I could say so, say so myself. Chica being one crazy chicken that people said that it was a duck, but it was not. Freddy Fazbear being very disturbing, and Foxy being a bit, well, in most people's eyes, misunderstood. But then when everything else came along, it became legendary. When the sequels came out, it became probably the most popular games since Slender Man. And they're similar to Slender Man in that it's one thing that they have in common. They build up the suspense. Five Nights at Freddy's has become one of those games that everybody loves because it builds up suspense. The suspense of the animatronics coming closer to you and trying to get through those doors until you have to survive until 6 a.m. shows how scary it is. And the fact that you're just one security guard. They don't have like five or ten of them anywhere. That builds up the suspense and believes you that you are not safe. That's what made it so good. Any other horror movie, it's a joke. Any other, well, not horror movie, even though horror movies nowadays are kind of a joke. But back then, with games, horror games, they're trying to not be a joke now, and it's really nice that they don't fool around. I do enjoy Five Nights at Freddy's. When the second one came out, you had to use a Freddy Fazbear mask so the animatronics don't think that you're, an, that you're at least an animatronic out of the suit. But the only one who doesn't who didn't who didn't get fooled, I think, was the puppet guy, and and I think that was it, puppet guy, and also Foxy. Um, so you only had a light, which basically would run out, um, and that was basically it. You had to use your instincts. And then when three came out, it was a reboot system. It had to keep rebooting your stuff in order to keep using it. And then four was just using your own your own mind of the suspense, leading the bad guys to go away. You're having your own nightmare. And then the, and then the uh, sister location was a bit different in that, well, you're a person learning how to use animatronics in the other areas. And then came Finance of Freddy's World, which was a very weird one, but I loved the playability. It had playability. It had, like, uh, replayability. Too bad it was canceled. And then came the other Five Nights at Freddy's games, which some of them are more like sim... The, the, one, the other one was a simulator, which still was scary. But the others I can't talk much about. And then I heard that there was going to be a new one coming out. I think Scott Cawthon just wanted to keep the legacy of Five Nights at Freddy's alive. And that's a very good reason. I love every single one of them. 
I hope someday he goes to Hot Toys, like HotToys.com, where they did Terminator, Alien, like these action figures you can actually stand up and place on a shelf or something, like as a display piece. I hope they put the animatronics. That would be amazing to actually see the animatronics in a very nice delight. Not only in a very nice delight, sorry, uh, some weirdo's texting me. He calls himself Jim for some reason. That is going to build up the big suspense. Is that I want to see a Five Nights at Freddy's type game that Scott Cawthon made that has to build up suspense. The suspense in the jump scares still get my heart racing every time. And it's an enjoyable thing to watch. I think that Five Nights at Freddy's is a, the jump scare equivalent. Slender Man, you're kind of vulnerable. You don't have a weapon to stop him. You just have to use your brains. But that was one of the older times. Five Nights at Freddy's, you're more vulnerable because, well, you can't move. You're stuck in one area of the entire place. And all you're doing is using your brains and the power you have left until it hits 6 a.m. And you can breathe heavily and relax. Now, ladies and gentlemen, tomorrow, this is based off of a book, ladies and gentlemen. You've seen it. You've probably seen it in the Horror Vision a couple of times. I'm not going to say it, but we're going to be looking at that and the Tim Burton 2009 classic. Oh yeah, we're going to be looking at a button-eyed, crazy extravaganza of stop motion, but also the actual real story of uh, this of this movie. Yep, there's actually it's not a true story. Yeah, you know, super it's supernatural. It's like a ghost story, but it's got to be one of my most favorite books, probably. And I'm not even a book reader, so I hope to see you there tomorrow. Oh, <laughs> man.